Good day everyone. I had a successful aluminum cutting today and I want to show you how I actually got it done. So I made these slots and from sketch you go down to slot and you do a center to center slot. This is the tool I used. What I did was I went in made a extrusion that was just a little bit wider than my slot and then in the sketches I think I can show you in the sketches here this is the slot a center to center slot and I'll draw one off this curve here so you can see what I'm doing so I'm gonna start here bring it over to here so 90 millimeter slot length click there and then you have to drag to get the width of the slot I was using a 6.3 millimeter end mill so I have to go something like five uh, nine or eight let's go with eight so I'm just going to type the number in eight there an eight millimeter wide slot it has to be big enough to fit the bit in and then you have to extrude it the depth I did five millimeters and then you have to make it a new body it wants to put cut the material if you're going through material here but it needs to be a new body so that you still have something to work with so I'm so this first level of material the first five millimeters is solid aluminum and I, I either showed a picture before or after but the bottom part of the material is fins something like 50 percent aluminum what I found was making a machining profile for this area and then doubling the depth for this area that seemed to work and keep the time down so I'll go to my cam file actually I just want to back out of this so I don't have that extra piece I'll go to my cam file and okay did I mess it up here we go so I've got two good G codes and I want to make sure you get these numbers the tool I used is a quarter inch flat end mill zinc coated I got it from CNC router parts the part number I'll write down but it's CARP dash AF dash 2 dash 8 ZN what worked for me was a 12,000 RPM spindle speed and then the cutting rate of 600 inch per minute excuse me 600 millimeters per minute and then I copied that all the way down through here in lead in feed rate lead out feed rate ramp rate and plunge rate and this gave me a feed per tooth of 0 0.025 I don't know if this is really good or bad but I had a tough time finding what a place to start the other thing I did was made my rough in passes one millimeter for the solid material another thing I did was go beyond the material so I'll try to show you that 
Um, you can see here the slot extends over the material. Um, this, this section right here is the cutting area. This is wood or air out here. I was wanted to give the tool time to cool off and um, be unloaded for a while and then come back into the material. Give me time to stop it if things weren't going right. So I picked one millimeter as the ramp and then I'll do a I have to change some things so you can see it. So what it did here is something different than I had planned. I really only want it to go five millimeters so I have to, well, we'll just take a look at it here. So this right here would be five millimeters. It would only go down this far with this path. But then there's a longer path here. And that's my other uh, tool path that has twice the cutting depth. So maybe they're both displayed here. I'm not sure. All right, here we go. It comes in and it passes over the material. Then it starts to gr grind in the material. There's a half millimeter then a half millimeter then it starts one cycle or back and forth would remove one millimeter of material you can see that I'll slow it down just a little bit see this area right here is what it's cutting and it gets up to a millimeter right there and then Okay, so that's pretty much wanted I what I wanted to show you. Six minutes and 33 seconds for the five millimeters of material. So I'm going to close that one, and then I'll go to this one. Uh, I just want to... So go the top five millimeters of material is already gone but the tool will proceed through there it takes a little time this takes four minutes and 36 seconds to go to the 20 mil 22 millimeter depth it's taking two millimeters off per cycle so a cycle would be from this end over to the left end here and then back it would take two millimeters off I'm sure my spindle speed my feed rate is gonna change from here but I had a tough time getting a place to start and I wanted to show you what worked for me so that you could have a place to start all right, so I'm going to, it goes all the way down to the bottom of the material.
section. What I liked was that you could hear the bit cutting and the spindle didn't appear to be uh, bogging down. That to me was a good sign. This next tool run goes through the solid material first that's already been carved out, then goes into the thin material which is a lot less dense. And so I tried a two millimeter ramp on those. It seemed to work out okay, <clears throat> but I didn't think you wanted to listen to the spindle the whole time. Also I had a radio playing in the background and YouTube doesn't like copyrighted materials leaking in. I spent a full day yesterday trying to get these tool runs to work and clamping down appeared to be problem number one. You can see here I've got clamps relatively close to the cutting area. If you don't clamp it down the bit tends to climb up the or the material tries to climb up the bit and it's cutting deeper and deeper material. Also I was getting aluminum bonded to my bit that was causing problems. I had warning ahead of time that I should be clamping. I did have it clamped down but not nearly as tight as I have it clamped down in this photo. The spindle also will get very close to the stock and that is because I want as much of the tool up inside the spindle as possible. Keeping my tool short was in an effort to reduce chatter. At the end of these cuts it's 22 millimeters down into the board and aluminum. It's not cutting much aluminum at that point but the spindle collet mount gets very close to the aluminum. When I was looking on the internet there are all kinds of people that want to tell you your feeds and speeds but I found nowhere saying start here with this spindle speed and with this feed rate and this depth of cut. I found that 12,000 RPM 600 millimeters per minute and one millimeter ramp. I didn't have a bogging down and I had successful cuts and the chips look okay. We'll move on from here but if you're going to start cutting aluminum in a slot you need some place to start. Also, you don't need dust collection on aluminum. The chips were spreading out about three feet from the spindle. Uh, I vacuumed those up in a separate vacuum. But it's nice that I don't have to clean the dust up everywhere in my shop. My process has cutting these heat sinks to a specific length plus or minus one millimeter and I'm thinking I can do it this way. One might say just use a bandsaw. I have a bandsaw. This is the way I want to cut them. If you're going to cut, cut aluminum use the family motto of anything worth doing is worth overdoing and clamp close to the cut and clamp firmly. Also with my handheld camera I'll get a shot of the chips. They're not fabulous but they are chips this is the material I'm cutting. It's approximately 22 millimeters high and 60 centimeters or 60 millimeters wide. This is how I was clamping it. And these are the cuts I made yesterday. They are pretty.
I did a test cut on a bandsaw to show the difference, and here they'll be displayed here, right here. I think I'm okay with this. I'm going to add some cooling to the system. But I thank you very much for watching. This has been fun, and I'd rather do this on a CNC than a bandsaw. Have a nice day, and subscribe. Thank you.